Welcome to rainbow, beautiful, sunny Hawaii. I'm Crystal on Quok Talk on Think Tech here today on Tuesday morning. I, why do we have that rainbow? Because there's something that's associated with the rainbow. In fact, the whole organization is called Rainbow 8808. And we're going to hone in because this rainbow is exactly what it is. It's a whole spectrum of, of issues that this beautiful lady has brought to the table and, and is, have put 100% effort to help in the society here. But we're going to hone in on some more specific parts of that rainbow today. So let me, without further ado, introduce our wonderful guest today, who is just a colorful lady in herself. <laughs> Carolyn Goloyu. Correct. Beautifully said. <laughs> well, sorry, but you know, a lot of people just don't know. It's J U C H. It's a, you said it's a Polish It's a Polish name. name. My husband is 100% Polish. Wow. Okay. So bringing mm -hmm. more diversity to Hawaii as That's we right. need. That's um, right. And you yourself, just give us a little um, background. Okay, info. Native American. I am Hispanic and I'm Irish. 2% uh, African American. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're tracing back from Ancestry.com. Yes. And what do you what do you think you are though? What is the essence of what, what do you identify I, most with? I think I'm an international spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. And thus the rainbow colors, yeah. That's it. That really goes. Now before I forget, you had this button on and unfortunately we had to take it off because of the green in it, but it was a little rainbow sign. And can you just tell us what your button says? Because you said it's part of your uniform. Why? Yes. Well it says I love, I heart my gay son. And that was an awakening in my life. And uh, since he came out to our family, it's been a whole new world. He's opened up a whole new world to us. Things that I, I was seeing, but didn't, I always said, well, I don't, they don't bother me and I won't bother them. And then when my son came out, then I realized there's much more to it than that. You can't just see discrimination and walk away from it, especially when it's in your family. Mm. And you can't deny it, and yet I know many do. So my badge, sometimes I think of it as a badge of courage, but really in reality all it is is an opening spot. It's welcoming others to talk to me. It opens them up. They know that I'm a safe person to mm. talk to. Was this the inspiration to you creating this Rainbow 88? And by the way, you should maybe tell our viewers what this all encompasses before we hone in on some specific Oh, okay. Issues. Well, we're a 501c, which makes us a nonprofit, and we uh, focus on the whole family, whether it's a one-person family or a multi-person family. And so we do try to support, love, and inform those. And so it's it's uh, the supporting is the big big role. That and we have. what are the type of families that you tend to focus on who need more support? Okay, families that have any problems, if it's just relating to each other, because we can go down that route through mm -hmm. my uh, master's in social work. I have been a therapist, and I I can talk to you one on one about what it means to be the mother of a gay son, a lesbian daughter. Although I don't have a lesbian daughter, but any of the alphabet, the LGBT community. Mm. You know. Actually, we want to remind everyone that the reason I met you is because it was the Women's March That's a few right. weeks ago. That's right. And Carolyn here was at a, um, a booth, if right. you will, right outside where everybody was congregating, and uh, you had all these um, sanitary napkins piled up, <laughs> um, along with some feminine canned food or hygiene. something. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, feminine mm. hygiene products. Right. <laughs> and so that was an aspect we hadn't thought of before, uh -huh. and because we, on a weekly basis, 52 weeks out of the year, supply a week's worth of fresh fruits and vegetables and milk and dairy products, yogurt and... To homeless to, people or to, to people no, in no, shelters? No, to Yo, which is a youth outreach. They've okay. been in Waikiki for 25 years. Great. And, um, and so we, we help them along. When we asked them, how can we support you? They said, we can't fill the youth up. They're always hungry. Aww. And that clicked something in me because my mother said, in this country, no one should ever go hungry. Yeah. And she said that, and I said, that's what we can do. And so we started out with just canned foods. And it was killing me as a mother mm. thinking, they can't survive on right. canned foods. Sure. And so I said, don't they like? vegetables and, <laughs> and fruits well. and, and dairy. And she said, yes, but the food bank has no refrigeration, so right. we can't get them. 
And I said, then that's our niche. Mm. And from then on, and we've been doing it since uh, November of, nine, uh, of 2013. Right. Well, that's wonderful. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, again, the image yeah. of the sanitary napkins on the table, too, just reminded me that there are certain issues as being a woman where people don't talk about that you that's need right. to deal with. That's right. And if you're a homeless or if you're from some, um, I don't know, you could be on the streets, you could be in a battered home, you could be in a happy family, but sometimes mm -hmm. those little things. That's right. And one, some of the women that came up that day, it was such a wonderful experience. Uh, one of them said to me, you know, I often wondered what happened when to a person who is on the streets, yeah. living on the streets, and they get their period. Where yeah. do they go? What do they do? If they don't have money for housing, right. then where does this come from? Yeah. And I said, well, Yo does what it can, but this is our effort in helping them. And so when we turned over, I called it my three bags full. We had so many. We had over 400, uh, almost $500 worth of pads and tampons. They even gave me some shampoo. They gave me, you know, they yeah, just brought, and it was wonderful. They'd yeah. come with their bags, you know, or it was in their backpack, and they'd take it off, and they'd start shoving it in, oh, nice. you know, on the table. Right. And who are the people who do receive these products? Um, they are the uh, participants, the, oh, uh, youth, the youth, right? the youth at Yo. Okay. So can we um, talk a little bit about that? You oh, know, when yes. you think about teens, like any kind of youths, you assume that they're just going to be disciplined under a house until they get old enough and then they get kicked out or whatever and then they figure out things themselves. That's but right. uh, many are unfortunate to have that. That's right. And, and they're out there on their own for some whatever reason, mm -hmm. too early, without enough support, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, so many things. That's right. And when we started, I had a problem with um, getting donations because people's reaction was, oh, they're just problem children. They don't like to follow rules and you know, they're misfit. And I said, no, do you know, statistics show that runaways are running from something, yep. either abuse in the home, and that could be verbal, sexual, physical abuse, or it could be that the parents throw them out. Oh, gosh. And I've talked to uh, some youth who have said, well, now, now, the other thing, we have a rainbow, and everyone can, you know, connects that with, uh, with uh, the LGBT community. Yeah. But remember before we started talking LGBT, Hawaii was the rainbow state. Every time you saw a rainbow, it was connected to well, us. It still is, yeah. And it still is. Yeah. The rainbow uh, warriors. Right. The, you know, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and there's your logo. And there's, there's our, our logo, right. see? Yeah. And the rainbow covers. <laughs> I love our logo because our logo shows that rainbows don't discriminate. Right. It's Regardless of age 100%. or, you know, sexual orientation or preference. Yeah or identity. So how many in these youth problematic groups in mm -hmm. Hawaii um, include uh, LGBT members who are struggling with multiple issues? Multiple issues. Well, they say 40% of any runaway run population is LGBT. Oh. And yet the LGBT community is only supposed to comprise of 5 to 10% of our community. I don't believe that though. So, see, see, but the they are more likely to be thrown out than another. Or do you think they are forced out, like they will choose to leave because it's just so much pressure mm -hmm. uh, and lack of support at home? That's right. So either way. One young out. woman told me, she said, well, once I told my father that I was a lesbian, right. he said, no daughter of mine will be that. He said, all my daughters are going to have uh, grandchildren for me. So guess what? She went out, she got herself pregnant, and he still kicked her out. Oh, and so she lived on the street for many years. You know, and I met the little girl. She was adorable. Her, and I had daughter no, of the yes. She's a homeless with her daughter. She was. Oh, she geez. was. She now has found um, a placement, but she was living on the streets. And if that does, if that doesn't tear your heart out, no, I don't know I, what what else exactly. will. Exactly. You know. So this brings out so 
many issues, you know, mm -hmm. this can of worms of mm -hmm. why these poor, innocent youths are out in the streets. And we back up into parents and, and their uh, interpretations of lives which bind them to certain expectations. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so how right. do we go about, you know, backtracking and, and educating people or opening up people's views of acceptance? Well, um, that's that's the hard nut to crack. Yeah. Because first of all, nobody wants to talk about it. Yes. And I, I would like to have people start opening their eyes up. When they go to a family party, when they go, because our families here in Hawaii are, you know, a hodgepodge of everybody. Sure. You know, as long as, you, you know, yeah. that's right. And you go, and all of a sudden, you don't see a particular person. All of a sudden, a member of the either host family mm -hmm. or a member of some of the visitors who you've seen year after year, and all of a sudden, this person is just missing, and they don't talk about them. Oh. Ask about them. So it's Ask a hush, them. Hush. I miss, I, I miss seeing your son, your right, daughter, right. whatever, or I miss, remember a character of them right. that brought, drew you to them. Why aren't they here? Where are they? So Where there's a lot gone? of shame and embarrassment yes, that's from the right. older generation generation who feel they cannot confront these issues, which actually destroys the, the, and the see, family. And I have a hard time with people who have a house over their head, who have food on the table and clothes and all the things that are necessary in our daily life, and they don't understand the person that doesn't have it. Um, in my community, we also have, it's not helping hands, but it's a safety watch, okay. you know, neighborhood watch right, okay. program. And um, I was there one of my first times that I went. We go on Monday nights, uh, once a month, every two months, something like that. And we walk through our townhouse association. Oh. And as I walked up and, and said hello and was talking to people, they started talking about, we have to be careful. You know, at right then was right after um, Aloha, the uh, airline. See, I've forgotten what the airline was. <laughs> Is that long ago? They okay. just one day in right. April okay. just closed up shop and, and all oh, of their people okay. were out. And it was right after that. And they started talking about, we have to watch our neighborhood because, you know, we're going to have a lot of homeless up here. And so I wanted to strangle them, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I just interjected. I said, oh, do any of you have any friends, cousins, aunties, or uncles that are out of work because the airline right, went belly right. up? And they sort of looked at me and I said, think of them. Hmm. They are our brothers and sisters Absolutely. too. See? And so that awareness yes. has to be there. And sometimes I just want to, you know. Shake them. <laughs> shake them. Wake them up Thank and you. say, Thank you. this is about us. It's That's not right. about something else. You know, this is a, a huge topic, and, and mm -hmm. just telling me the case study, not even the case study, but a personal, your, your lady, mm -hmm. the girl who was um, kicked out of her house, uh, it just tears my heart apart, too. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll continue talking about and, and opening up our eyes and hearts to what's going on and why we are so apathetic to homeless and such to the youth. Mm -hmm. So don't go away. Very important stuff to talk about. Hello, thank you for watching Think Tech Planet of the Courageous. I'm Dr. Dean Nelson, host of Planet of the Courageous. In Tibetan mythology, it's said that you pick this planet to learn something. You picked your birth on this planet to learn something. This planet is spinning and hurling through space at 67,000 miles per hour, and it takes courage to not slip into fear and collapse into anxiety. One can find so many justifications for selfishness and prejudice, but we have two ears to listen to one another and one heart that can provide a common ground, but this takes courage to stay in that space. We've chosen the right planet for the opportunity to learn courage and try to solve so many challenges. Aloha. Thank you for watching. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. Um, you know, my heart is somewhere else now because Carolyn Golia here on behalf of Rainbow 808 has just opened up this world that we 
prefer to just say it has nothing to do with my life. I know there are lots of homeless in Hawaii and so blah, blah, blah. But it's just, Carolyn, please um, awaken us um, okay. about the situation. And we all know the homeless is a huge problem here. But, you know, when it comes to the youth and why they were kicked out or why they left the house and, and, and consequences of them being on the street and, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth, especially girls, can we talk a little bit more about that and some situations Certainly. you've seen that okay. we need to know? Uh, and this was before I ever started Rainbow Family 808. Okay. Uh, it was several years ago, our daughter, I have two children, yeah. a daughter and an, uh, an adult. Both of my children are adults. Yes. And uh, my daughter had her own apartment. And um, I was given a call. I took a call from a friend on the Big Island who said, Carolyn, please help this young man. Um, he moved, he had a job on the Big Island, but his mother encouraged him to come home. And so he did. While he was home, he found out, uh, his mother found out he was gay. And she said, I have to throw you out. You oh. can't, you are a danger to uh, my daughters. What? Now, this, you know, let's go back to basics, biology yeah, 101, yeah. Yeah, folks. Yeah, if anything, yeah. a girlfriend, you are the right. safest. <laughs> That's right, yes, you know. And, and she said, uh, she said, he's now living on the street and we're worried he's going to get into drugs and into prostitution and we're, I'm just worried about him. What does a young man at 17 do on the street? And I said, so I talked to my daughter. I called some churches and they said, well, give us some information and we'll put it in our bulletin next week. I said, oh, no, no, that's not, that's that, 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 I can't do that next week. I want him off the street now, now, now I hear you. before someone yeah, encourages him right. or pimps him or whatever. And so I asked my daughter, you have this, this apartment. She was subletting one room. So she, you know, the prices of, and it wasn't a fancy uh, apartment, but it was a three bedroom. Okay. And I said, you're already renting it out to one young man. Could you take him, this, this one young 17 year old, you, you, right? Yeah. I said, I will help him get a job. Uh, we will pay his first month's rent with you. We'll pay for two months rent with you. We bought him clothes and food wow. and, and uh, sheets and That's bed wonderful. linens and everything. Yeah. And we moved him in because I don't know what he would have done. Right. But I put myself, how would I have felt if my parents had thrown me out? Of course. Out? You know, I would go, where do I go? What right. do I do? You and know. if you were the one on the street, how would you feel if someone did bring you in and say, hey, it's okay, you can stay here, we'll That's get right. your work, you'll That's be all right. right. That's right. And how does that change a person? Yes. You know, and, and the sad part about it is he was such a go-getter that he had, once he had moved back to uh, Oahu, yeah. he'd already gotten himself a part-time job. But she went to his place of employment and started yelling oh, at no. his boss, saying, how can you have this gay, uh, my gay son working for you? Well. The people who had been buying things, had them in their hands, were, went and put them down and walked out. And so finally the owner or the manager got, was able to get the mother out of the, out of the store. Mm. But then he told the young man, he said, I have no guarantee that your mother's not going to do this again. Right. And he said, I don't know how much I just lost in uh. all those sales. Because see, no one wanted to be around the conflict. Exactly. And nobody no. wants to be involved with anything no. with any risk. That's Everybody right. Wants to At any safe. risk. And they don't even, you know. Does it shock you to today that there's so much uh, just I don't think narrow-mindedness is even the word for mm -hmm. it. It's so far beyond that mm -hmm. um, that people are continuing this type of concept well, and lack of embracing of, of diversity which we've kind of brought up to, to mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Is it shocking or is this something uh, we're missing here? I want it to continue to be shocking because every time I just take it for granted then I become part of the problem. Mm. And so there's that, you know, oh, I've heard this before. Oh, my, you know. Have you tried to talk to the parents who have shunned their kids because of their lack of uh, acceptance, whether it's because of LGBT issues or whatever? Well, have you tried? I had uh, years ago when we, we had a uh, support group once a month, 
I did that for almost 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> but that was for the LGBT community. Right. You know, and, and I did talk to those. One mother had said that the only reason she was at the support group meeting was because her son said, you either go to this support group meeting or you'll never see me again. Oh, wow. And that was quite, but that was the did only it, way. Did it work, though? Did, did, did she change her concept? Um, she spent most of her time at our meetings crying. She would come with a scripture verse and say, She's blaming it on Yeah, something. well, she, she'd say, how can I resolve this knowing that this is in the Bible? And so luckily we had um, okay. several people that were, well, my husband and I have put on um, Bible studies back in Europe. And so we knew how to answer, but we like to have it come from everyone rather than just whoever sure. is holding the, the support group. And so we had a lot of people that would say, "Oh!" And then they would they would counter her her right. her uh, her Bible study her, her, with uh, you know with something else and say, "Well, what about that? Yeah. How can you?" That, and see, yeah. part of me says, "If it's your child, and if you bore that child for nine months, and you know them, and that's one of the things that brought me when my son came out was that." How old was he when he came out? Twenty-two. But you sent when he was growing nope. up as an adolescent? Never. Not at all? No. It just kind of, nope. did he talk to you or you uh, just kind of caught him or he, what? It was right before he finished college and right after dad had signed on the bottom line with all the, <laughs> paid all the bills. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Clever boy. But yes, very, 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 <laughs> very smart. Right. And then he came out to us. And see, at that time, which is the best time to come out is when you're safe, you mm -hmm. know that you have something to run to, you have some means of escaping, um, and it just But you can't my, control that. A lot of can. youths are struggling with um, their sexuality when they're 12 or even That's earlier. Right. And it's earlier now. It's earlier. 22 is old for today. Do you know age. in high schools now, even in Hawaii, I interviewed some lady, and she said her teenage daughter had a, a handful, a handful of friends who were going through um, sexual operations in teenagers. In teenagers. And it's not see? just the concept, it's just the actual operation. That's right. And see, that's how far we moved on some aspects, right. but we haven't moved all the way. So, yeah, yeah, the question is, how do we get parents who, who are struggling to, to accept their child for whatever reasons, how do we get them to accept their children? You just said, you know, you bear them for nine months, you think it'd be right. a natural thing, but... Well, there's the other side to that, that till the age of 18 to 21, they are financially responsible for them. Right. And so my idea when I'm really having a bad day is I want to arrest them all and slap them with a charge and make them pay if they can't get along. See, this world is so diverse now, and yes. we have so many avenues for help. There is all kinds. If you're having problems and your child is, is too belligerent, then get a counselor. Right. Yes. What's at the bottom of that? Yes. Don't just smack them around exactly. or throw them out because you are now in unencourageable or... And what? you're destroying yourself. You are hurt hurting and, and just bleeding mm -hmm. inside because well, I'm of that pain. I'm glad you can see their part because all I see well, is I'm the a pain parent of the too. kid. No, That's right. That's because right. it's both ways because mm -hmm. you're all, once a parent, always a parent, right? That's right. Even yes. when your drug addict um, gay son at mm -hmm. 50 gets into jail and you have to bail him out for the 20th time, it's still your kid. That's right. But there's also a love, uh, a tough love program for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So in our limited time, tell okay. us, go back to how we can help these um, youths who are on the streets, or how do we even kind of move forward with this? It's just... Okay. Well, first of all, it's personal. Okay. You have to really feel the need. If you don't have that situation in your home, if everything is, someone called our family the the. What is it? Leave it to Beaver family once, oh. which is absolutely not true. Okay, good. Uh, but you have to have that heart. You can't have a child. And the thing is, though, we know there are children born to parents that have no mothering skills, have no nurturing skills, because the father is just as, as mm. uh, liable for and this. And it's a vicious cycle, because they will end up having kids who That's might right. be doing the same thing. And so they may not have grown up in a home. That I always counter that right away with, wait a second, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. 
And so, you know, it, it's just, I'm in this turmoil all the time, trying to feel for the parent, but looking because the parent has money, they have avenues, they have a, they have a, a roof over their heads. Yes. When it rains, I have a real problem because I know the kids You're are out in the these street. Kids. Oh. And it, the thing is, remember, if 40% of all runaways are LGBT, that means 60% are straight. And so um, that was one of the, that isn't one of the yeah it was one of the things Yo mm -hmm. Youth Outreach yeah. in Waikiki taught me because when I first went to them I was known more for an advocate for the LGBT community and they said to me well you know we would really welcome your help but you know that we can't isolate whatever you give us just to the and I said right. oh okay. never it's never 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 not with this yeah. not with our group right. because we're we don't discriminate. And that's going back to the rainbow idea. Mm -hmm. You encompass every we, aspect of, of, it. That's of the it. spectrum. That's it. You've got it. You've so got it's it. so inclusive that it doesn't matter that's where you right. come from. How do people reach you and how do youths who really feel or you have friends and family who think they need, how, how do they come and approach you? They can the call me at 808-779-9078. They can email me at rainbowfamily808 at gmail.com. Go on our website. It's rainbowfamily808.com. See what we're doing. Today, I'm going to change clothes, jump into my comfortable clothes, and we're putting on a uh, Valentine's oh. barbecue for the kids. Oh, wonderful. So we're doing hamburgers and hot dogs. I made potato salad, and uh, I just hope it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and chips and soda, and we're going to have them make uh, their own ice cream sundaes. And, oh, and, and, and they, they will yo. come. They want they to come. come. Well, they come because they're used to going to Yo. Okay. In Waikiki, okay. which is part of the Waikiki Health Center. Okay. They're Good. just one of the programs within that. That's why we collect the money so that we can buy whatever it is. Yeah. You know, that's why. If I'm they glad, have, Carolyn. You uh -oh. know, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, and it's so sad that some people are not fortunate enough to enjoy it in the way they want to. And so, Carolyn, with the biggest heart I know in oh. Hawaii, <laughs> no. is providing that for them. And if only you can think a little bit with your heart to support these youths and to support Rainbow 808 and right. to talk to um, families who do need this help and embrace everyone. Please, happy Valentine's Day to those people who need the heart. You Thank know. you so much Thank for, you for everything you've shared today. I'm and I'm not going to let you go because you're going to come back and talk more. Oh, I'd love that. Okay. I love that.